why can't I remember where I put my keys? Why does my brain feel like it's boiling over and losing precious information? When I grow old, will I forget all the wonderful moments in my life? If you've ever pondered these questions, you're not alone. Many of us believe that our memory is inherently inefficient, like outdated computers. But what if I told you that your brain is working exactly how it's supposed to, and your memory isn't the problem? Your brain is being constantly flooded with new information. According to a study conducted a few years ago by researchers at the University of California, San Diego, led by Roger Bond, individuals are exposed to a staggering 34 gigabytes of information every single day, and this is only increasing. But here's the catch. Your brain isn't a hoarder, it's a curator. It prioritizes what to remember and what to forget. So memory isn't just about retention, it's about optimal forgetting. And we can lean on computer science to understand how to forget. A really phenomenal book, Algorithms to Live By by Brian Christian and Tom Griffiths, analyzes forgetting well by looking at two principles. In 1879, a psychologist named Herman Ebbinghaus did an experiment where each day he would sit down and memorize a list of nonsense syllables. Then he would test himself on lists from previous days. Over the course of a year, his results mapped out a graph of how memory fades over time which is today known as the forgetting curve. Later in 1987, psychologist and computer scientist John Anderson and his collaborator, Lael Schooler, were analyzing how our memory function relates to the world around us. They looked at patterns in sources of different scales and societal reach and found the exact same curve as the forgetting curve. So they concluded that the pattern by which things fade from our minds is the very pattern by which things fade from use around us. It's a perfect tuning of the brain to the world, making available precisely the things that are most likely to be needed. They proceed to summarize how to understand these results, saying, a natural way to think about forgetting is that our minds simply run out of space. But the problem might not be one of storage, but of organization. The key to a good human memory then becomes the same as the key to a good computer cache, predicting which items are most likely to be wanted in the future. In the same way that every level of computing requires advanced caching techniques, our memory functions similarly. Computers might be better at indexing near infinite amounts of data and juggling a lot of things simultaneously, and they're obviously a lot faster than our brains. But another thing that this book reveals is that although our brains deal in longer amounts of time, algorithmically they have an advantage that computers don't, which is intuition. We use that intuition all the time to make certain types of decisions better than computers can with lower effort and less information while achieving similar success. Our memories function based on both experience and prediction of what we're going to need to recall, the same caching system that we program into computers. Obviously then, our memories inherently work fine. They're not outdated at all. In fact, they're incredibly robust, and with intuition included, they're perfectly suited to running a single person's life. So because your memory is functioning as it should, and it's more than enough to do what you need from it individually. Your brain doesn't need to be tricked into working better. What you need is to use it the way it's meant to be used to combat the overwhelm of information. Put simply, our brain won't remember what it doesn't need. Understanding that, how do we create the necessity to remember and get our memory to follow the same priorities as our personality? The first idea is to forget more. Since you can't remember everything, you need to prioritize what to forget. This is partly an issue of letting go of fear. Using technology to remember what you have to do with a to-do list and a calendar is a great start to clearing up those mental processes and being able to forget things confidently. That way you can focus on what's more important. And there are also long-term considerations to make as well. We do sometimes need to remember things that we're not going to use soon enough for our brain to naturally recall it. Fortunately for that, we live in an age with incredibly simple, accessible, and searchable tools that save and organize everything in our lives to an almost unlimited extent. I'd say that we should never be trying to remember anything that we can save instead. And thirdly, to help you toward that goal, it's important to be willing to build better habits and deprogram bad ones. For the majority of us, the problem is that we fall into bad habits that detract from what we're trying to do, and we don't intentionally take the time to build the habits that would cause us to need to remember the information we want to remember. An example of that is I'm learning Japanese. I have a pretty easy time grasping grammatical concepts, but vocabulary is really difficult for me. The only solution to memorizing vocabulary is to create situations where I'm hearing and using the words regularly. So I've made a habit of consuming as much media as I can in Japanese, studying my textbook at least a couple days per week, using flashcard apps which are based on spaced repetition, and engaging in basic conversations on social media in Japanese as well as I can. I'm making it important to recall the things that I'm learning frequently. I'm certain that the number one reason that people fail to revise their habits is because habits are comfort and we are creatures of comfort. We don't like to give it up, but it's important to realize that a change in your habit is only permanent if you let it be. You can afford to break bad habits and forge new ones 
because you can always change back or revise your plan if something doesn't work out. It's really not that scary as long as you can make that initial break and let go of the fear of losing your comfort. And finally, with your mental capacity cleared out, your non-immediate information stored, and your habits requiring you to recall the things that you want to recall, you should see a dramatic increase in your ability to remember things that are important. And on top of that, your new habits will see you starting to live the life you want in a far fuller way.